Well, good morning and welcome to 700 Club Interactive. It sounds easy enough. Find enlightenment and enjoy life free from pain and suffering. After 28 years of searching, that life still eluded Michael Graham. But one night he found it without even trying. Buddhism, Hinduism, yoga, meditation, Vedanta, and this sort of Eastern philosophy. And it was the promises of those things that fired me up. Extravagant promises, and the promises of a life free of suffering, experience of the ultimate truth, enlightenment. Michael Graham's fascination with Eastern mysticism came when he was a teenager in Melbourne, Australia, even though he attended a Christian school. It's amazing that after 10 years of boarding school, 15 minutes of chapel every morning, one and a half hours of church on Sunday, all I remember really were the, were the stained glass windows and the nice hymns. And, but if I was asked to have explained the gospel, I wouldn't have had a clue. With no spiritual compass, Michael began studying books on Eastern philosophy and religion that he found in his father's library. They were adverting to the possibility of becoming Superman, being free from the human condition, being happy, being overcoming all your limitations. And I thought, whoa, where do I sign? This is just what I'm looking for. For years, Michael practiced meditation, but couldn't achieve the peace and calm he strived for. So I was a failed meditator. And that's the reason I went to India, to have my meditation fixed by a meditation master in that country. There, he studied under a famous guru. He was a charismatic character, not just in personality-wise, but he radiated something. I said that I'd come all the way from Australia to learn how to meditate properly. And he said simply through the translator, don't worry, everything will be fine. But everything was not fine. After 28 years of practice, I was not enlightened, nor had anyone that I was associated for all those years come close to it either. His guru told him it was only a matter of time. He would say, three years with me, you'll be enlightened. And then the third year came, and then he jacked it up to six years, then he jacked it up to nine years, then jacked it to 12 years, then he jacked it up to th three lifetimes. So it was always elusive, always out of reach. Still, Michael persisted. He even became a yogi and started running transcendental meditation centers in the US and India. One day while meditating, he had a strange experience. I was looking for the truth, and it turns out the truth found me. I went into isolation for 10 days, and a quite extraordinary thing happened. The image of Jesus Christ formed up inside my chest cavity. But what happened following that was astounding. There was an experience beyond all words can tell. There was an openness and love coming from Christ to me of cosmic proportions, along with an invitation and a welcome, as if to say, give me your life and breath and I'll take care of you. Michael was stunned. But I didn't know how to respond. What am I going to do with this? I mean, I didn't have a major problem with Christianity, but I was a, the inside track yogi, the real thing, the mystical thing, church, standard stuff would have been no interest to me. So I, I didn't know what to do. So Michael continued with his practices. Then while in the States, he says he had a revelation. As if pushed into me from outside myself was a conviction that everything I had done, all the disciplines, practices, the thousands of hours of meditation, the cognitions, the realization, had all added up to a huge, fat zero. After that, Michael began listening to evangelists on the radio during his daily commute. I must have listened to about 150 hours of top expository preaching. I became quite well educated to the first principles of Christianity, the Bible, who Christ was, where he came, all his promises. That's what really got me. I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, this sort of thing. I thought, wow, well, you know, that's what I was always looking for. I became sufficiently well informed to make up my mind that one day I would make a decision to acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior. The time for Michael to make that decision came at a Billy Graham crusade. And so many things began here in Oakland. I saw a big billboard in Oakland, it was 1997, saying something about Billy Graham coming to town. So I thought, what a wonderful opportunity to make this decision in front of a, a cloud of witnesses. After the message, Reverend Graham gave an invitation for people to come forward and accept Christ as their savior. Michael didn't hesitate. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat and come and stand here in front of this platform. I shot, was down there like a shot out of a gun. And from that moment, I was never the same again. There was, a, uh, there was a rest that came over me that was behind feelings and experiences. But above all, this began a change of heart and mind that I'd sought 
so much through the Eastern spiritual tradition for all those years, and it came as a free gift of grace. Now an author and apologist, Michael still travels to India to tell Hindus that true peace only comes through Jesus Christ. Wherever I am, I'm sharing the gospel through the means of testimony, either written or spoken. My purpose is to uh, acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the source of my life, uh, to, to extend his love to other people, to promote the fact that he is preeminent and supreme, and the fact that it is through him salvation comes and him alone. And uh, this is what gives me meaning and purpose. It's not by works, lest anyone should boast. That's what the Bible says. Here's Michael. He's been meditating for years. He's gotten really good at it. But he still hasn't found what he was looking for. He was looking for the promise of it, that you can transcend the reality all around you. You can, you can have this secret knowledge and come to a place where you're, you're no longer limited by things. That was the promise. And it never came. He never realized it. And then it dawned on him that no one around him, even the experts, had realized it. And then he had an amazing experience. He decided he was going to separate himself. He was, he was really going to find out, what is all this about? And he had a dramatic encounter, not based on his meditation, not based on his work, but based on the free gift of God. Here's the promise, and you find it in Joel chapter 2. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That includes you, all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And that's what happened to Michael. He saw a vision. He had a, a, a waking dream. And in that, he discovered the true source of life and the true source of all the promises. And that changed his life. Now, he still didn't want to go into Christianity. He didn't want to have all the rituals, all the things he grew up with in Australia. And it's amazing to me, he's stuck with his, his rituals his Buddhist meditations, his, his Hindu meditations, he stuck with that. Why? Because that's what he was used to. And then he came to a crusade. And he said, I, I, I want to know more about this. He started listening to the principles of the Bible on the radio. And then he made the decision. Years after the revelation. Now, what about you? Do you want to know? Do you want to have your own experience where you're not basing it on what other people say, you're basing it on what you know? Well, here's a promise for you, and it's for all Christians. John 14, verse 21. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Jesus wants to have you to have a direct relationship with him. Not secondhand, third hand. He wants to show up for you. He wants to manifest himself to, sh to you. What do you have to do? All you have to do is love him. And then I would add, ask for it. If you're looking for this. Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know that you're real. I want to know that you're in my heart. I love you, but I want to know. And if you pray that with all of your heart, the Bible says that if, when you seek me with all of your heart, then you'll find me. Well, what about Michael? Why did it happen to him? Well, you can go back to that verse in Joel, I'll pour out my spirit to all flesh. But here's another one for you in Romans 10. I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. Jesus has sheep not of our folds. He wants to go out and find the lost ones and bring them home. He wants to do that. He'll leave the 99 to go for the one. 
And so even those who aren't asking, who have no idea he exists, he is still found by them. So for you today, if you're, if you're interested in this, take that challenge. Jesus, will you show up for me? Will you manifest yourself to me? Will you, will you show me? And if you pray that, he'll answer. If you want somebody to help you with this, we're here for you 24 hours a day. Numbers toll free, 888-777-1999. And if you want to know more about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we have a spiritual life section on CBN.com where we have lots of ex uh, trainings, uh, teachings, all for you, and it's all free. All you have to do is go to the website. Do it now. Call us now, 888-777-1999.